Dennis Noyle gets it out to Stephen Jones. Dunby's on the outside, goes for the break. Goff just brings him down outside the Osprey 22. In goes Noyle once again. Josh Turnbull trying to power his way forward. Noyle looking to release, bodies in the way. And there's another kick on the way for the Scarlets. The Ospreys not getting away from the tackle area. Success at the second time of asking for Stephen Jones. The Scarlets are ahead. Pause, engage, in nine. That time, the scrum steady. Lions, Noyle launches it high into the air. Advantage being played for the Ospreys. Shane Williams tries to break clear. In front of the kick. Well, that's clear enough. A man in front. And there is George North, just a little bit too eager. That's well struck by Dan Bigger, and it's back all square. Phillips had a look to see who's willing to take on the running. Richard Hibbard. Dipping the shoulder. Good pass by Shane Williams. No, it's gone slightly forward. And even though the Scarlets could use advantage with Dan Evans in the clear, the whistle had clearly gone. Frustration for the Scarlet fullback. There's the forward pass, but the whistle had gone before George North had picked it up. Yes. And fed on to Dan Evans. Stay nine. That's better. Noyle. Stephen Jones, oh, that's a clever kick for Sean Lamont. Lamont, oh, great tackle, Lee Byrne. What an intelligent kick that was to try and beat the on-rushing defence. But that is a superb tackle by Lee Byrne. Noyle again persisting with the kicks downfield, trying to put pressure on, but there's time for Richard Fussell. Oh, Fussell, great run over halfway, looking to link up, Shane Williams is there in support. Jerry Collins straight in there as well, making sure that possession is on its way back once more. Dan Bigger stabs it through, but it's a bit of a nothing kick, really. Lou Reed safely takes, and then again, one for George North to chase from Tavis Noyle, nobody fancies that one Mike Phillips picks up Burn on the counter brilliant tackle by Josh Turnbull it is a supercharged scarlet pack this evening but the penalty's gone against them that time well, the timing of Dan Bigger's kicking is impeccable and again he draws the Ospreys level but they've hardly been in the game plenty of food for thought Collins and Holler in unison. But it's been turned over. It's Scarlet Ball. Turnbull. Josh Turnbull looking to fend off Dan Bigger. They're inside the Osprey 22. There's a penalty coming. And that's what the Scarlets will have. And there's a talking to as well. Ian Goff being called over. Oh, takes Tavis Noyle out. Knew exactly what he's doing. Should be yellow. Good start to the second half for the Scarlets. They need that six-point gap. Bigger. Oh, lovely work by Bishop. Paul James the link. Lee Byrne. Byrne. Oh, forward to Richard Fussell. But there's nobody spotted it. The try is going to be allowed. Definitely a forward pass. And the game that's had everything is controversy as well. Look at that. Richard Fussell almost in Burryport taking the pass. No wonder the crowd are incensed at Park the Scarlets. Oh, that's some collision between Marty Holler and Tommy Bow. But both of them up OK. Good work by Andrew Bishop. Good clear out by the Ospreys. Phillips arrives. Oh, big hit by Dominic Day on Dan Berger. And he's won the penalty as well. It is such a physical encounter this evening. It's Hugh Bennett putting his weight on it. Stephen Jones with a fifth success 
And the Scarlets edge back ahead. Phillips goes one way, then the other, then straight behind. That is a great strike by Lieburn. Oh, wonderful boot out of hand. Josh Turnbull has been everywhere this evening. Wants to keep the momentum going. Oh, the kick charged down by Marty Holler. Holler, the race is on. Scott Williams has just got back there first to save the day. Holler knows how close he was. A lot to do. And maybe that was, in fact, carried over. Should be a scrum five. Bigger. Bennett again takes it on, determined. Running from the replacement hooker, Jerry Collins. Gets another few precious yards. Ryan Jones next in line. This is good from the Ospreys. And quick ball to get it out wide. Shane Williams. Bo Alan Wayne Jones. It's a second try. Very, very well done indeed. Great handling. Just checking the elbow. That's safe. Good try. They're back in front. Oh, Bishop could be a man spare on the left, but it's the hooker, Bennett. They could do with the winger. Lovely cut back inside, though. And it's Reese Thomas, the prop who got the tackle in, and the Scarlets managed to clear. Great handling again by the Ospreys. Oh, knocked out of Mike Phillips' hands, but he's making the most of it. Phillips still going, a couple of metres short. Dan Bigger ready in the pocket for a drop goal, but Hugh Bennett wants to try. Inches short only. Phillips back up on his feet. He's had a quick glance over his shoulder. There's Bigger. And that could be the match winner. He's popped it over. With just eight minutes remaining. Osprey's back ahead. Martin Roberts. Oh, magic. Sheer magic to Johnny Famatoina on the 10 metre line. The Scarlet pressing forward. Regan King at his imperial best. And there's a penalty coming for the Scarlets. This could be the lifeline to get the draw. But it is going to be a very, very difficult kick. On the limit for Stephen Jones. Has he given it enough? No, just short. And it's not going to be enough for the Scarlets tonight. It is a step in stone. We're not where we want to be, but we're working hard to get there. And that was definitely a step forward. The game was always going to hinge on a couple of key moments. Um, unfortunately, those key moments we weren't in control of, and neither were the Ospreys. So uh, it's very, very frustrating. You know, they needed to score in that first half. Uh, and then second half, to credit to the boys, they came out uh, with, with a huge desire. I think our bench contributed uh, hugely, and we scored two fine tries. So, um, you know, it's, it's really pleasing that we're going in the right direction, and it's excellent preparation for next week. Kingsley and Rob, great to see you, fellas. Kingsley, pulsating game, great advert for the Magnus and Welsh rugby. Yeah, I, you know, I've watched the game last night uh, with a glass of wine, and I watched it again this morning. I, I just, it, I was fascinated by it. I think the intensity. Uh, it's a great advert for Welsh uh, for Welsh rugby and also mm. for the Magnus. I mean, the crowd, everything played its part, and uh, it was a real high level. And two teams really give everything. Yeah, Rob, Scarlets had plenty of possession, but. When you were watching it, you always thought that the Ospreys just had that little bit of experience and were able to use the squad as well. Well, they had a good bench as well. As Sean Hawley mentioned that, um, you know, to bring Ryan Jones, James Hook off the, the bench is a fantastic attribute to have. But um, I thought the Scarlets ma- were magnificent. It was a great, good old-fashioned derby game. Right from the word go, they came out, they flew into the Ospreys. Really frustrated them for long periods of time. But as you said, probably a little bit too much experience in Noah with, uh, with the Osprey side. But in all honesty, the Scarlets, that will come, that will develop. You know, there are a couple of key players missing yesterday, yet they pushed them as close as, uh, you know, well, probably closer than they expected themselves. So there's a lot to do. Yeah. Kingsley, what was the difference for you? Uh, for me, the difference was one person, uh, Marty Holler. Absolutely outstanding. There was, times, uh, there was times in the game where I thought that the Ospreys had 16 players. That's bread and butter for him. But look, on his feet, he's possibly one of the best players in the world at the breakdown, still turning the ball over. Here he's working back, quick line out from Burn, working back. What can let him down is decision making on the ball at times. There's a loose pass, and he has made those errors through his career. But look, he's given the ball away to the Scarlets, first man back, textbook through the gate on his feet, and a fantastic turnover, getting the ball back for the Ospreys. You know, he never gives up, he doesn't stop running, he works for the full, full game. 
QC Scarlett's taking a quick line out. Who's there in the opposition's face taking a kick? Marty Ola. And a bounce either way there could have been a try mm. for the Ospreys. He's non stop. Here, this is, this is bread and butter stuff for him, you know. Around the legs, great tackle, back on his feet. And this 78 minutes, the Scarlets are on the front foot, you know. They come in fighting to get back into the game, they'll possibly win the game. Who's the tackler? Holler, on his feet, over the ball. What does he do? Create another turnover. And really, that's killed the game. Any chance the Scarlets have got is gone with that, with that turnover there. Absolutely incredible performance. Great me. technique by Marty Holler. He's always been an all-action type of player. Rob, as for the Scarlets, some good individual performances as well. Who stood out for you? Well, I thought Josh Turnbull was uh, fantastic. He's got an incredible engine, works uh, all game. Um, Regan King, some brilliant skills in, in midfield. But Tavis Knowles impressed me all year. I mean, he seems to be getting better and better. He's a very tough character, always gets gain line. He's ne never prepared to pass any rubbish on. If it's poor ball, he's prepared to take on the opposition and always makes those yards, uh, those one or two yards. But what I think I, I like about him this year is that perhaps technically in terms of his passing game and his kicking game, it's, it, it wasn't the best. He's worked on it and it's become a lot, lot better. He, he kicks very well and his distribution generally is very good. Is it true that you had a hand in his development? I did... Uh, <laughs> I, Go uh, on! <laughs> no, I think the, the one session, one of the first sessions he had as a 15-year-old boy in yeah. uh, a Slavera school, I, I, I took him for a, a scrum half session uh, a few years back and, you know, uh, he's, he's obviously learnt a lot from it. <laughs> Yeah, Rob said he never make it. So, <laughs> yeah. Look at him now. Look at him now. No, no, he's, he's done very well. He's, he's certainly got a bright future down the Scarlets, and I think with Wales as well, he's very well liked, I know, by the Welsh management, yeah. um, who feel that he has the, the qualities, not just as a rugby player, but as a person as well, you know, within the environment, to really uh, develop. And Kingsley, I just want to touch on, we just touched on it with Rob, mm -hmm. but once again, the Ospreys bench, suddenly they have a very, very good squad, capable of, of anything this year. Yeah, and you know, like, exactly, I mean, to be able to bring those players on, and there's a young Tuperick there, you know, he's a very good young player, Tuperick, and, and I mean, to get into the side over Marty Ollie, he's going to have to pull his, you know, pull his weight, be, but this tremendous to be able to bring those players on, and that's what you need to be successful. They won the Magnus last year, and, and you know, I really feel that the Ospreys don't get the credit they deserve. They've got a big squad. It's difficult to manage. You know, sometimes you have a, not such a strong squad and you overachieve. They, they have got a squad now that can really push on in, in every tournament. OK, boys, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Well, great crowd last night, but the Scarlets, like the other regions, have struggled getting crowds actually through the gates. So what the Scarlets have done, well, they've taken to the internet to bring in a new generation of young fans. They've even taken to the internet. <laughs> Ah, oh, Mr. King, please come in. Ooh. <clears throat> hmm. Right, we better take a look and uh, pop your top off. That, Mr. King, is a classic case of scarlet fever. Yeah. I don't know what to talk about, whether to talk about Stephen Jones's acting or whether to talk about Nurse Noyle. What do you make of Nurse Noyle? Oh, great acting. You know, <laughs> uh, fantastic. He's got something to fall back on with that. You uh, know, uh, he'd be after Ricochet's job, I think. I know. I'll tell you something, Rob, what struck me last night and over the past couple of weeks as well, something's happened in the Magnus, isn't it? It's been criticised for the level of competition, yeah, poor crowds. Uh, there's a real excitement about the Magnus this year, whether it's because, you know, at the end of it there's, there's the World Cup and it's a long season... Uh, there's two Italian sides in, but, but there's definitely, it, it's gone up a notch or two, there's no doubt about it. In terms of crowds, 11,000 at the Blues game on, on, on Thursday night, with 13,000 yesterday, and it's all about, I think, going out, selling yourself in whichever way possible. The internet, of course, is a fantastic medium uh, to promote yourself, and, and they've managed to do that, and the crowds have been absolutely fantastic, and, and long may they continue. 